the first pitch misses for ball one. Schumacher one for four in game one. He also was the leadoff man in that game against Zambrano. There's a foul off to the left. Zambrano got the win in that first game. And he helped himself get it. He broke a 3 3 tie in the fourth inning with a home run. That gave the Cubs the lead. They never gave up. Zambrano got the win. Loesch took the loss coming back from the disabled list. Two and one the count. Albert Pujols in the hole. Due up third in the inning. That's a liner into center field for a base hit. Now we'll take a look at the Chicago Cubs defensively in this game. We'll go around the outfield. Alfonso Soriano in left field. Sam Fold getting the call in center field. Covers a lot of ground out there. Milton Bradley, the offseason acquisition to right. Aramis Ramirez back in the lineup at third base. Ryan Terrio at short. Jeff Baker at second base and Derek Lee at first. McCoy Hill catching the second game today, getting both ends of the doubleheader. Well, he's going to get a couple of days off. Yeah, that's right. Ramirez, even with the bag at third for Colby Rasmus, and diving safely back to first base is Schumacher. Schumacher's the leadoff man, but he's not the prototype of a leadoff man. He's not a guy who steals bases. He has only two steals this year. In fact, the leading base dealer for the Cardinals, Albert Pujols. Uh, he's stolen seven. He's only been caught twice, which is tells you he kind of sneaks up on him every once in a while. Actually, you say he's not a prototype of a leadoff man. We're going to talk about that later who, on. Who has stolen seven? Pujols. Pujols has stolen ten. Well, my thing says seven and two. You, you've got to get some uh, new stats. <laughs> Albert is on deck. One ball, one strike. That's my fault, Joe. I was supposed to get him for you today, and I didn't get him for you yet. And that is a ball up and away. Howard has 10 steals, been caught three times. That's not a whole lot of steals to be. As a team, they only have 41 stolen bases. That's actually less than Carl Crawford of the Tampa Bay Rays has so far this year. Two and one the count. Kobe Rasmus has 11 home runs for the year to lead all rookies in the National League in that category, including a game ending home run and a dramatic victory for the Cardinals over the San Francisco Giants. We could go Wednesday, with, and that kind of turned things around for the Cardinals. They, they got hot until they played here in Chicago yesterday, beginning with his game ending home run. And when he hit that game ending home run, the so called walk off home run, he was the first Cardinal rookie to have done that since 1983. And Andy Van Slyke was the guy who did it in 83. No Cardinal rookie had done it since Van Slyke until Rasmus about 10, 11 days ago. Well, Tony LaRusso likes to have some power in the two hole in the lineup, somebody that can drive the ball and hit it in the gap and maybe score a runner from first base. And Rasmus is, has really shown some versatility in this Cardinals lineup. Batting anywhere from second down to seventh and eighth. He's only 22 years old. He takes off the outside. That's a walk. And Wells is in immediate trouble. Runners at first and second. And here is Albert Pujols. And this is not the way to succeed against this Cardinal lineup. The idea is always try to get the other guys out and, and face Albert with the bases empty. Where you, you could just walk him if you want. Well, this is why. When you talk to Tony La Russa, he likes to have Albert Pujols at third because he wants to make sure that pitcher knows even if he gets the first two guys out, he's going to have to face Albert. And if he gets anyone on, he's going to be in immediate trouble. That's why he doesn't hit four. Albert Pujols he did have a two-run double in the first game. And he takes a ball off the outside from Randy Wells. Now, the Cardinals have not seen much of Randy Wells. In the in the past, Wells has only worked in relief against the Cubs, and Pujols only had one at bat against him. But he's hit 40 home runs in his career against the Cubs overall. Perfect pitcher's pitch on the outside corner at the knees for a strike. Well, Zambrano started him away like that today, and then he tried to go inside, and he hit it off down the left field line for a double. That is, you said, a perfect pitch, knee high and away.
Two men on, nobody out. Albert, did he swing? Yes, he did. Played up by Marvin Hudson, made the call himself. Got a ball on two strikes. So Tony LaRusso wouldn't mind maybe getting some help from Lance Barksdale at first base to see whether he went around. I think they got it right. He did, but you know, the, the amazing thing about Albert Pools is the, stri the lack of strikeouts. We know he 35 strikeouts, 32 home runs this year. He is a contact power hitter. It's almost DiMaggio like. But he said he struck out fewer times than he hit home runs for his entire career. But John, he says he doesn't lose his aggressiveness with two strikes, and which is amazing to me. Normally, you take a little bit, but you back up a little bit, you back off a little bit when you have two strikes. But he says he does not lose his aggressiveness. He just concentrates a little harder on letting the ball get a little deeper on him, which means he'll hit a lot of balls to right field. Two to the count. That's a double play ball to Terrio. There's one. Baker doubles him up as Schumacher goes to third. And he got Albert out in front of the breaking ball. And he rolled over it. And watch him roll over it. And that's a 6-4-3 Taylor made double play ball. Really like the way Colby Rasmus goes in hard to second base right here on Jeff Baker to break up the double play. Obviously, they get pools easily, but they'll remember that that Rasmus is a guy who does come in hard. Good aggressive base running. The right Tony Russo likes it. Now Ryan Ludwig, who has had the hot hand lately. Ludwig, who had 37 homers and 113 batted in this year, got off, or, uh, last year, and then this year got off to a fast start, but went on the disabled list fairly early in the season and he took a long time to come around after coming back from the DL. He smashes one. Deep left center. That one is gone. A home run. So Wells gets pool holes but then Ludwig gets Wells. A two run blast and the Cardinals jump ahead. Well, you have to get the ball down and especially if 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 you're Wells, you cannot pitch up, and this pitch is up, and he rips it over the left center field wall. Now the pitch is up, pretty much in the middle of the plate. They wanted it low and away, of course, but you're going to miss a lot of spots throughout the ball game. But a good job there by Ludwig to make him play first pitch. Randy Wells. Gives up the long ball to uh, Ryan Ludwig. And Ludwig has his 14th homer of the year. He's got 54 RBIs. Here's Ankiel, who had been struggling big time. In fact, for most of the Cardinal power hitters, other than Albert Pujols, they've all been struggling. As we mentioned, Ludwig has started to come around. But they're waiting for Ankiel to heat up. Also, Chris Duncan, another guy they anticipate power from. They, they, Figured 20 25 home runs for both Duncan and Ankiel at the least. Ankiel's only hit five. That change up was too low. And it's three and one. And that, that home run from Ludwig is only the second home run Randy Wells has given up to a right handed hitter this year. So he has been very effective. And every other pitch was down and on the corners. And the one mistake he made, Ludwig made him pay. Ankiel thought he had a walk. And Marvin Hudson brings him back. And they talk about it. Three and two. Case off said that was a little bit out of the strike zone. Broken back. Racing in. Fold. Gets there. But Ryan Ludwig's hot streak continues, and the Cardinals have gone ahead. Two run shot against Wells. Now the Cubs.
Cubs come to bat, and here's the batting order. Turned in by Lou Pinella, presented by Taco Bell. Sam Fold leads off center field. Ryan Terrio, the exciting shortstop. Derek Lee, he'd been real hot lately. At first base, Aramis Ramirez, back for the disabled list just this week. Alfonso Soriano not hitting leadoff. He'd been in a terrible slump. He's in left field. Milton Bradley trying to get it going. Right field. Jeff Baker, former Colorado Rockies second base. Coy Hill, the catcher. And Giovanni Soto on the disabled list. And Randy Wells, the pitcher, is batting ninth. And Adam Wainwright, looking for his 10th win of the year, is on the mound for the Cardinals. A 27-year-old right hand. Look at the innings pitched, 122 and a third. He's gone 16 straight starts of six innings or more. So he is a workhorse for Tony La Russa. And the first pitch strike to Sam Fold. Fold, 27 years old. Four hits, 13 at bat so far this year. And a big curveball inside from Wainwright. And when he's right, you'll see that curveball a lot. And so it's pretty hard. Sink the ball, but that, that curveball is a, it's got a great curveball, John. Really bites. Fastball. Right past the back, the third of fair ball. And Keel. And Fold has a double. Well, you see the pitch they set up away right here. Yadier Molina and Wainwright throws it right where he wants to. Fold does a nice job going with the pitch. Able to keep it fair. You see with the third baseman in, Joe Thurston in, protecting against the bunt. It gives him a little bit better angle and less time for Thurston to react and able to keep that fair. Now Ryan Terrio. And with so many of the Cubs hitters having started poorly or having bad years as he drops the bunt down. And is thrown out by Yadier Molina with foul going to third. I'm having with two run deficit. I'm having a, a hard time imagining that he was just giving himself up sick, strictly for a sacrifice. Well, he did pretty much, John. He squared around pretty quickly. It wasn't a drag bunt. He looked like he was just making sure that he got the run over to third base. But you're right. I mean, with a two run deficit, and you also have to remember, you know, Terrio is a very good hitter. Terrio hits the ball the other way. He can go the other way, but he's hitting 299 as well. Here's Derek Lee, who is hot. His overall average, 281, 17 homers, 56 batted in. But most of the run producing has been done lately. And a curveball snaps in there for a called strike. Yeah, it is surprising. Why would you give up an out this early? You're down two runs. You've, you look like you've got some momentum going. You've got an ace, one of the aces of the St. Louis Cardinals on the mound here, and your big bat's coming up. Infield back normal depth. And he started him with that 72 mile an hour curveball for a called strike. And then the 92 mile an hour high hard one, he blew right by him. Strike two. Well, what you're going to see from Adam Wainwright is he'll oftentimes use his fastball off of the curveball. He'll throw the big looping curveball, the 12 to 6 break, and then throw the fastball in the same plane. He's effective with the fastball up in the zone. And the slider is low and outside. One ball, two strikes, and it's tough to get a ball past Yadier Molina, one of the best defensive catchers in the game. He's heading to his first All-Star game. He's one of the, the catching Molina brothers, Benji with the Giants and Jose with the Yankees, and the kid brother, Yadier Molina, with the Cardinals. One ball and two strikes with a runner at third. One out. Now the right side of the infield comes in just all of a sudden. And that's a Tony Terrell. That's an elusive ploy. What he tries to do when he gets ahead of you in the count, he thinks that you can't swing as freely, and he tries to sneak in for a pitch or two. Now they're going back. They may stay back the rest of this at bat, but he will sneak in and take a pitch away from you every once in a while. Well, and they, they didn't come in until just before the pitch. Well, right. what happens is the hitter thinks all I need is to hit a ground ball to get an RBI. So all of a sudden you charge the infield in, and that ground ball may cut down the runner at the plate. Well, they are staying back just as you surmised, Joe, on a check swing and an appeal denied by Barksdale at first. No swing as he upheld the ruling by Marvin Hudson. The count is three and two to the man who has six homers and 17 RBIs this month. This is only the 12th day of July. He leads the majors in both homers and RBIs in the month of July. Derek Lee left yesterday's game with 
neck spasms. Did not play the first game today. But back in there tonight. The right side comes in again. It's a ground ball through the left side. And Derek Lee delivers. Fouled is in to score. And it is 2-1 to one Cardinals. Well, what happens there is you try to get into Lee's head. He did not. He got a breaking ball and he just pulled it in the hole. Off speed pitch. Maybe it was a change up. Well, the first pitch is a breaking ball for a strike, and then the high fastball, and he wastes a breaking ball away. Another fastball down, another breaking ball away, and a breaking ball that he hits into the hole for a base hit. And that look from K Zone brought to you by Cabot Stains. And there's a foul by Aramis Ramirez. This is the big bat of the Cubs. One of the top RBI men in the National League for several years. And after a serious left shoulder injury, he has been missing for a good long while for the Cubs. He's back now, but not hitting for any power yet. Just returned earlier this week. It's called a strike. A fastball from Wainwright on the outside. It's 0-2. I'll tell you, the first swing from Aramis Ramirez in this at-bat was as aggressive as I've seen him swing since he's come back. There's some thought that coming back from the dislocated shoulder that he still feels it a little bit on the follow through of his swing. It's his left shoulder. So it's the arm that extends back beyond the body. But he really looked like he swung for the fences on the first pitch. And he lunged at that curveball and stays alive. Oh and to the count. Well, the Cubs have definitely missed Ramirez to me. He is the has always been the key to their offense not just. You know the last couple of years, but he is the most consistent RBI man on the team. I mean, he's the guy that everybody fears the most when they play the Cubs. Oh, and to the count to Ramirez, two to one. The Cardinals lead here in the first. Lee at first, only one out, and he follows up the curve with a fastball off the inside. This is the injury back on May the eighth. Ryan Braun of the Brewers hit this ground ball and. He separated his left shoulder making this dive. You see all the weight coming down with his elbow extended. And that's off the inside. Well, you, you wonder why. I mean, Ramirez is obviously a good hitter. You look at his resume. But the reason he's so important now, the Cubs are hitting 218 this year as a team with runners in scoring position. 218. So a guy that has 600 RBI seasons on his resume. Is a welcome addition back in the lineup. He just got a piece of that one. Fastball down and away. And a foul tip off the glove of Molina. Two balls, two strikes to count. Alfonso Soriano, who is one of those who has struggled terribly in the RBI situations, on deck. Soriano's hitting only 159 with runners in scoring position for the year. Ramirez is only playing his 24th game of the year and hitting 429 in those clutch at bats. That's with a runner at second or third or both. There's a runner at first here. Soriano on deck. Of course, with Aramis Ramirez, if there's a runner on any base, he could be in scoring position because Aramis hits a lot of home runs, but we haven't seen the power since he returned earlier this week. Adam Wainwright, the two and two count. Curveball. This could be two. Thurston to second one. And Schumacher doubles him up. Two to one, Cardinals, as we head to the second inning. Yadier Molina coming up.
Sunday Night Baseball from Wrigley Field, Chicago. The All Star break is soon to be upon us. In fact, it will be in St. Louis on Tuesday evening. Here is the first pitch to Yadier Molina. He gets buzzed by a Wells fastball. Yadier Molina hitting 280, five homers, 30 batted in. He gets buzzed again. Now he has a a little bit of a bone to pick with Randy Wells. It's a little bit surprising. I mean, you can't think that there's any issue there, but uh, two pitches up and in. Molina reacting to it. Wells, a guy who does have terrific control, only 15 base on balls this year. And that fastball is in there for a strike. Javier Molina, who has accomplished a lot at a young age as he takes a ball strike on the outside. He has already appeared in two World Series. He was in two World Series before he turned 25. One of only three catchers who can say that in the history of the game. Yogi Barra and Johnny Bench are the other two. Javier in the shallow right. There is Milton Bradley. One away. Let's go to the studio. Here's Ryan Burr with the Sports Center right now. Josh uh, looked like he was back pitching at Yankee Stadium in the 2003 World Series when he pitched the clincher to win it for the Florida Marlins. Very impressive. One ball, one strike to Joe Thurston. And the changeup is low from Randy Wells. Weren't you wishing Joe Thurston uh, and his wife yeah, all the best? Jay Lee. They had a, yeah. they had a baby they recently. Jay Lee. Wife Raquel. I thought maybe you'd want to do that again since you called him Joe. You called him <laughs> well, by somebody else's name. <laughs> <laughs> we had a reason last time. <laughs> Three and one the count. And that's a foul down the right field line by Joe Thurston. Three and two the count to the the happy, proud Papa. Joe Thurston. Formerly with the Dodgers. I remember he came up. Uh, one time with the Dodgers in September and did so well that they penciled him in to be the second baseman the following spring and then he he did so poorly that he ended up losing the job before spring training was over. Now he's a Cardinal. Check swing and that is a swing says Marvin Hudson strike three the first strikeout for Randy Wells. Randy Wells has that fastball on a slider working. You see him setting up away, kind of running it off the plate right there. And Marvin Hudson expanding the strike zone on that outside part of the plate. We've seen that in a couple of at bats already in this game. You don't think, think he said it was a swing? Ah. He, po he pointed at Thurston? No, well, maybe it was the swing then because the pitch certainly looked off the plate. I'm saying that Marvin thought it was off the plate, but that Joe swung it. Oh, well, let's see. You're, you're defending. But he did. He did. He did point at him. He pointed at. Yeah, Joe he Thurston. very well may have. Adam Wainwright hitting eighth in the order, right up the middle base hit. So Adam Wainwright has a clean single to center. That's his seventh hit of the year in 49 at bats. Wow. Now that was. Hey, you're going to throw a couple pitches up and into my catcher, and I'm going to go right back up the middle on you here. So Wainwright is aboard, and now Brendan Ryan hitting ninth. And again, Joe, Tony La Russa has a reason for hitting the pitcher eighth and an actual hitter hitting ninth, unlike every other team, basically. And it really has to do with Albert Pujols. Yeah, well, it started with Mark McGuire. He started it, you know, when McGuire was there, and he wanted McGuire to hit fourth. Have three people in front of him, but without him hitting fourth, because if you drop down in the order from third, obviously you, you lose at bats over the course of the season. So they wanted to simulate him hitting fourth, but actually have him hit third so he get the at bats of a third place hitter. So it, he puts Wainwright in the A slot, 
and therefore the ninth place hitter becomes like a leadoff hitter. That's what he's thinking. He's first, then you have your first place hitter, your second place hitter, your third, and Albert has the four guys in front of him. But the three guys actually. More chances, maybe. More to chances to drive in runs. Well, he wants to get more men on base so they can't walk him. Remember with McGuire, if he didn't have men on, they would walk him. So if you got runners on, as they had in the first game today, first and second, there was no place to put him. Today they had to pitch to him because there were runners in first and second. So that's it has worked to Tony's satisfaction anyway. Ryan along the right field line, Bradley giving chase into a slide and look out. He did not get to it and and he met the wall rather intimately there, but he seems to be okay. And that's good. Interesting they give him a big hand here because you know he's been booed a lot lately. But and you know, I think that's the one thing about baseball fans. I don't care if you're not hitting well or whatever, but if you hustle and show them that you're going all out for the team, they will appreciate it. I'd say the one thing about Milton Bradley too is he's harder on himself than any fan can be on him when you're booing. He wants to produce offensively and defensively. He's had some tough runs so far here, but he cares as much as anybody out in that field. And he was at this time last year on his way to Yankee Stadium for the All-Star game. He was a member of the American League All-Stars last year. He had a fabulous year for the Texas Rangers. He and Josh Hamilton were quite a duo in that lineup. And Ryan chases that Randy Wells slider for the strikeout. One hit, one left. Alfonso Soriano, then Bradley coming up. He beated, uh, he defeated Josh Hamilton in the final round, but it was Hamilton who wowed the crowd in New York with a first round record 28 home runs. He put on quite the show and created a home run derby legend. The top sluggers in the game will be swinging for the fences tomorrow night. Albert Pujols will headline a field competing in the 2009 State Farm Home Run Derby from Bush Stadium. The, uh, Pool holes, Adrian Gonzalez of the Padres, Prince Fielder of the Brewers, Ryan Howard of the Phillies for the National League, Carlos Pena named today. He's leading the American League at home runs. Nelson Cruz of the Rangers, Brandon Andrew hit two home runs for the Tigers today. He had his own little tree <laughs> home run derby going in Detroit. And uh, Joe Maurer will also be involved from the Minnesota Twins. Alfonso Soriano hitting only 236. He's got 14 homers. Which is not too bad, but he hadn't hit many of them lately. Well, he actually got off to a decent start this year, especially as you said, home run wise, but he has really struggled lately, and that's one of the reasons they dropped him out of the leadoff spot. And right to the left fielder, Ankio. Now, Cubs fans are hoping for Soriano to break out and start hitting home runs again so badly that 
half the crowd went nuts just to see him hit one in the air that time. Wistful thinking, I think, on that one. But that's where he's been getting beat, the high fastball and the breaking ball away. That high fastball, he just has not been able to catch up to it this year and drive it. Soriano hit 30 home runs at Wrigley Field his first two years with the Cubs. 17 last year here. Only three at Wrigley this year as Bradley fouls one back and out of play. In his last 22 games at Wrigley, Soriano hitting 189 with no homers at all. Bradley, 237, six homers. And that's off the inside. One thing about Bradley, He's a switch hitter, and he has always been a guy that got a lot of walks, and that hasn't changed. His on-base average, with a very low batting average, his on-base average is 373. He had three walks in the first game today. But when I watch him hit, he looks like he's not nearly as aggressive as he has been in the past. And today, when I watched him, you know, he walked three times. It looked like a couple of times he was happy to get a walk. He was not nearly aggressive in the early, early part of the count. Look, Joe, look, let me ask you this. One of the things they're doing, they're trying to rework Milton Bradley's swing. They said he's been disjointed. The bottom half and the top half aren't working together. How difficult is it to work on your swing and still compete in game situations? Well, I read where they said he's open, his upper half is open, and his lower half is closed, which means that, you know, they're not working together. Let me take a look here. I mean right there it looks like he's in pretty good position. He was just late on the ball and there's you see he felt like he was in good position. He just missed it. He was just late on that one. Three and two from Wainwright. And it's a walk. Well let's take a look and see if he's blocking himself there. He's, see he looks like he's in good shape right there. I mean that's a pretty good there's good balance there. And everything. That's why he was upset because he missed it because everything was right except the contact of the ball. There's Von Joshua. He's a new hitting instructor. You know, Gerald Perry was here last year when they led the world in hitting and the National League in hitting and every run scored and everything else. And so far this year, they haven't hit well. And Gerald Perry was the one that paid the price. And since Von Joshua has been here, he's been trying to make some changes himself because every hitting instructor will have a different approach. One out, one on as Jeff Baker, former Colorado Rockies uh, infielder, is at the plate, hitting only 176 for the Cubs in 34 at bats. One out, Milton Bradley, the runner, at first. Well, Joe, as, as a hitter, can you go in there and start thinking, well, my hands have to be here, my stride has to be here, and still focus on hitting the ball in the game? Well, when you have to think about all those things, no. The answer is no. You have to be able to concentrate on finding the ball, the release point from the pitcher, and following the ball. You can't start thinking about where you are physically. This could be two. Ryan. And now Schumacher on the hop. It is a double play. <laughs> it wasn't very elegantly performed by the Cardinals, but they got it. And Albert made it happen at first base. Top of the order coming up with the Cardinals. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell brought to you by Chevy and Bud Light.
Sunday night baseball from Wrigley Field and top of the order for the Cardinals. Skip Schumacher takes a strike call from Cubs right hander Randy Wells. The sinker misses one ball, one strike. Schumacher hit a single to start the first inning. That started a two run rally. He's hitting over 300. Slashes it foul into the crowd. Look out. That got there in a hurry. One ball, two strikes. Colby Rasmus will follow. And then Albert Pujols will be coming up third here in the Cardinals third inning. So Albert's going to be in that home run derby tomorrow night in his home ballpark as the leading home run hitter on the planet as Schumacher strikes out on the Wells slider. Beautifully thrown, and there is one away. In the Cubs second inning, things ended on this double play ball. Well, it became a tough double play because Ryan could not get the ball out of his glove. Now, the one problem you have here, if you're a second baseman, you don't like a guy rolling at you as Milton Bradley does. You don't mind a guy coming in tight as we see at first base. Looks like maybe they did get him at first, but you do not want a guy rolling. You do not mind a guy sliding hard and whatever, but when you roll, you have a chance of hurting the guy's knees, and that's, I'm sure that's one of the things that Schumacher was telling Bradley. You do not need to roll. Remember Skip Schumacher new to second base, a converted guy just this year. Tony Larusa thought that he could had the athleticism to play second base, and he gave himself a lot of room using the base to protect himself to turn that double play as well. Let's go back to the first inning. Colby Rasmus went in real hard on a double play in the first inning as well. You see him, you know, he's got three feet behind the base there, and Bradley going in hard and trying to get a piece of him. And that's ball four to Colby Rasmus, who has walked twice in this game. Been up twice, drew a walk both times, and it's ironic because he has not walked that often as a rookie. He's on base average, only 324. You know, that gives him 18 walks all told. And here is Albert Pujols. And Albert came up with two men on and nobody out in the first inning. It grounded into a double play. The slider from Wells misses. Well, the great thing about Albert Pujols is he makes adjustments, you know, pitch to pitch, at bat to at bat. And he knows how he got him out the first time up. Now he will protect against that happening again, getting into that same double play by getting out in front of the changeup. And sinker at the knees for a strike. But in the game that ESPN carried from St. Louis with the Giants and Cardinals about 10 days ago, Albert struck out his first trip to the plate against the Giants, Matt Kane, and then he walloped the ball the rest of the night. He hit a ball up into Big Mac land. And uh, sometimes you get Albert early, but that doesn't mean you keep getting him. Well, that's, that's the trait of a great hitter is being able to make adjustments. He does not let you get him out the same way twice. He makes you change your pattern and he makes the adjustment 30 plus home runs every year that he has played this is his ninth season that one is fading and foe makes the catch it with the slide but it's interesting we saw Zambrano try to get in on Pujols today Pujols pulled it down the line even though he was jammed. This ball is in on him and you see he fights it off and a good job by Foley to come in and get a good jump on it because when you're playing against Albert Pujols obviously you're playing very deep. But the ball stayed up there quite a while but he got jammed on a ball inside. He was trying to keep from pulling up rolling over the top of it. So Albert is 0 for 2 against Wells. Two down. Rasmus still at first. Here is Ludwig who launched a two run homer out into deep left center. In the first inning. When you think about the Cubs in this division, the Cubs are getting Ramirez back and they expect to start playing a lot better. Well, Ludwig is starting to be the guy that he was last year behind Albert Pujols, and that's like getting a new player as well. Man, he got jammed. The bat snaps in two, and the ball is caught by Baker, calling off Lee. And Wells retires the Cubs. Last of the third, two to one, St. Louis.
ESPN Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell. On a perfect July night in Chicago. Cubs and Cardinals. And a, a big game in this series where if the Cubs win, they take three out of four from their rivals and are in the All Star break right there. Virtually tied for second in the division. Corey Hill takes a strike from Adam Wayne right now. In to center. The ball is slicing right back to Colby Rasmus. And there is one away. And the batter will be Randy Wells, the pitcher in the National League Central. But the Cubs win earlier today back of Carlos Zambrano. And their win yesterday, now just two and a half back of St. Louis. The Brewers lost to the Dodgers 7 to 4. Clayton Kershaw got another win. The Dodgers continue to have the best record in all of Major League Baseball. And they go into the break with a seven game lead over in the West. But here are the Cubs where things have been going so poorly. Including at the start of this series. Here is Ryan. And Wells is out number two in the third inning against Wainwright. Two down. Uh, Brendan Ryan is a great story, I think. You know, he only got his chance because Khalil Green got injured. Well, he's not injured, he's on the disabled list. And this guy has come in and he's become a good hitter. He's an excellent defensive shortstop. Makes all the plays, even though he double clutched on the ball we saw earlier. He makes all the defensive plays, and he's been swinging the bat much better lately. So he's adjusting to playing every day, and I think he's going to be a star. I mean, they're not going to miss Khalil Green as much as they thought. Sam Fold, leadoff man, shows Buck takes a called strike. Fold hit a double to lead off the first inning and eventually scored the Cubs run. One of the things Brendan Ryan's had to do is kind of pull back the reins a little bit. He's a very aggressive, a little bit hyper guy that Tony La Russa said would run into mistakes at times. He's got another base hit. So many mistakes tonight with him. <laughs> Major League Baseball All-Star Red Carpet Show presented by Chevy on uh, Tuesday. But first off, tomorrow night, the State Farm Home Run Derby right here on ESPN. Starting at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. The Taco Bell Legends and Celebrity Softball Game after. Then the Red Carpet Show on Tuesday on the MLB Network. And then the All-Star Game itself, 8 Eastern on Fox. In the right, and that's in there. Ryan Terrio with a base hit. And Fold stops at second. And that's the guy that gave himself up. In the first inning, because as I said, then he could hit the ball to the right side, and he's having a pretty good season. And when you're two down, you don't need to. I mean, when you're two runs down, you don't have to sacrifice and give up that out if you can hit the ball the other way. Well, this is the spot where Derek Lee has been thriving in the month of July. Lee. Knocked in the Cubs run with a single with Fold at third and one out in the first inning. Now you've got Fold at second, Terrio at first, two down here in the third. A base hit could tie the game. Cards lead two to one over the Cubs. Adam Wainwright. But that will land in the glove of Ankiel. Five batters in the inning, only eight pitches thrown by Wainwright. Ankiel coming up.
Rick Ankiel facing Randy Wells. Ankiel has flied out to center in his only at bat. Yadier Molina and Joe Thurston will follow. Here is Terry. A nice pickup, and he throws him out. Uh, that's the difference there in playing big league shortstop and playing just average shortstop. In the big leagues, you're expected to make all those plays, even though they take the tough hops. You're supposed to make it. Anybody can catch the routine hop. That separates the good big league shortstop from the others. See, that was a tough hop. The ball came up on him, but you're supposed to be able to make those plays. Again, that's what separates you from a minor league shortstop. Good play there. And all shortstops should be able to make the, the good hop play. And you know, I think that Ryan Terrio has one of the best infield instructors. In their dugout, that's Alan Trammell, longtime Detroit Tiger shortstop, fundamentally sound player. And Terry is really similar in his defensive approach, very fundamentally sound. Doesn't make the, the flashy play or the dramatic play, but makes all the routine plays, and he oftentimes makes them look easy. Yeah, the Molina chases that sinker, and the count is 0 2. Yeah, won the gold glove last year in the National League. He's already been in two World Series. Now he's an All Star. He's only 20. Seven years old. In fact, he'll turn 27 tomorrow. Did he swing? No. Lance Barksdale on the appeal said that was a check swing. One and two to Yadier. Yeah, he checked it. You know, you were mentioning Trammell, a, a good ex teammate of mine. I mean, De Jesus is also one of their infields. He was a very good fundamentally sound shortstop as well. He was one of my teammates in Philadelphia. Very good player. We played in Excellent the shortstop. Played in the 83 World Series with you against yeah. Baltimore. So, uh, you guys, although you didn't win the World Series, Why I'm not blaming it on you. Me that. <laughs> I'm not blaming it on you guys. But, uh. <laughs> I don't know. There was something in your tone that seemed to me like you were blaming it on Joe. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you could have done better. Well, that's true. <laughs> Three and two the count. Well, you were almost at the end of your career by then. Actually, it was one of my better World Series, though. <laughs> oh, you did. You hit a home run. Two. You hit two? Two. <laughs> but who's counting? Yeah, I hit two. I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah. Off of the left-handers, too. Both of them. You hit when uh, Scott McGregor yeah. in, in game one. Yeah. And what, Mike Flanagan? Mike Flanagan in game three in Philadelphia. That is a shot. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it was at the time, especially. <laughs> now, you were what, 39? I can't remember all that, John. We you don't need to go into all that. About 39 years old. We weren't talking time. about all that. We were just talking and, about. And you were one of the youngest guys in that team. They, they called the Philly. They, they, they the were joking kids. about it. They called them the Wheeze Kids. Yeah, I was <laughs> younger than Pete. I was younger than Perez. I was younger than a lot of guys. You're right on that team. <laughs> Michael Jack Schmidt. He was one of the kids on that team. Yeah. And that's ball four to Yadier Molina. That's pretty good battle with Molina and Randy Wells. Let's get an update from the studio with Ryan Byrne. Play Joe Thurston, who's a fast runner, but he could not beat that double play grounder. In 60 seconds, we'll visit with Tony Larusa, the manager of the Cardinals, from the.
And Tony La Russa's St. Louis Cardinals are leading the Cubs here in Chicago tonight. Two to one. And Tony, welcome to Sunday Night Baseball. And we appreciate you coming on with us. Well, it's an exciting night, so we're glad to be here. Now, Tony, we saw Ryan Ludwig hit that home run. He's starting to heat up a little bit. What's been the difference that's got him back on track offensively? Well, he was doing all right, and then he got hurt. Pulled a hammy, and he was out. Coming back, you know, he kind of rushed it, tried to force things, and that wasn't working. So now he's settling back and just taking what they give him, and he's a real force. On that same note, Tony, Rick Ankill has not been able to swing the bat well. What do you see? What are you going to have to do to get him started? Well, he, he's uh, an aggressive to the point of impatient at times, uh, and I'm not sure. I think, you know, physically that right shoulder where he banged himself on that tough collision, I don't think it's 100% yet. And Tony, how far could Adam Wainwright go tonight? He looks pretty strong. Well, he's, uh, he's you know, he doesn't warm up very much, so he saves a lot of pitches, and he, he can throw a lot of pitches, and hopefully he's effective as he is early. All right, Tony, many thanks, and uh, all the best to you. Thank you. Tony LaRusso. And this is a, a, a big, strong guy, Adam Wainwright. He's only thrown 37 pitches through the first three innings. And he tends to get stronger as the game goes along. That's been his history. A little bit off the outside to clean up Matt Aramis Ramirez from and the that, Cubs. And that's usually just the opposite. You know, first time through the order, you know, guys hit him in a 273 clip, and then he gets worse. And normally it's just the opposite. You know, you get a chance to see a guy second time through the order, you have a better idea of what he's throwing. And then by the third time through the order, you feel like you're ready to hit him. But in this case, he seems to get better as the game goes along. Well, his secondary pitches, that curveball and slider, are such effective pitches for him that he establishes the fastball early. And then those are swing and miss pitches that hitters oftentimes will chase out of the strike zone. Ramirez grounded into an inning ending double play in the first inning against Wainwright. That fastball misses. Two balls and a strike to count with Alfonso Soriano on deck. Milton Bradley view up third. The Cubs are down by a run. We've seen the Cardinals already make a deal for Mark DeRosa to try to add. Obviously, he's injured his wrist and on the disabled list, but there's speculation they have interest in Roy Halladay as well. Did he swing? Yes. First base umpire Barksdale said that was a swing and a slider that ended up going to the backstop. Ramirez will do that a lot John he'll swing at bad pitches early in the count then he seems to settle in and be a little more patient. Mm. <laughs> he didn't think so. Two and two the count. Well, the slider hit ever so slowly right to Albert Pujols. Albert takes it himself. And that was a half a swing. I mean again he may not want to extend with his front shoulder which is the one that he dislocated but watch his front his left arm. So he just kind of reaches out he doesn't even finish the swing. He just reaches out and makes sure he puts the ball in place. Yeah, he doesn't use his front arm very much at all on that swing. And as he's running he kind of dangled that arm and then kind of pulled it up and in a little bit uh, somewhat protecting it. So I wonder if he had a little stinger on that swing. Even as he watching him. Going back to the dugout, he had that same posture with that that left arm, that left shoulder. I think he, something must have happened. He felt it somehow. And Soriano is at the plate with a count of one ball and one strike. Soriano had a fly ball to left his first time. That definitely wasn't an Aramis Ramirez type swing. He just kind of reached out and poked it. A liner. To Ankiel. Soriano hit it solidly, but into an out, and he continues to have that home run drop going. Well, the reason that, you, that ball there was sinking because he's coming over the top of it, he's locking his front part of his body in, and then he's using his hands and roll over. And I watched, noticed that the first time up when he had a pitch to hit. Now, watch his hands, watch how he just rolls them over right there. See that? That's why he did not, that ball didn't carry it. He gets a lot of top spin on it, so it sinks when he goes to the outfield. So is that is that something about the timing? Or yeah, just no, I think it's yeah, I think it's his timing. He does, he's not free. He was blocked a little bit, so you have to use your hands to make up. Your body doesn't open up and allow you to swing the bat freely. Bradley with a smash in the center field for a base hit. His first hit to go with an earlier walk. Now his swing does look much better. We we had the Cubs game last Monday, but for Alfonso Soriano. 
Yeah, I agree with you, Joe. He was kind of on the uppercut when he hit that ball. Look at how closed he is right now. He's, he's more closed than I remember. It's like a pitcher thrown across his body. He's a hitter hitting across his body. He's a guy that used to uncoil that swing. Now, he's not getting as much of a leg kick, I don't think, as he used to. And he really has to fight to get around because he's locked up on that front side. Strike one, Jeff Baker fouling one back. Well, you saw the numbers. He had 12 home runs in 35 games. And he was really hitting the long ball frequently. Only two home runs since in 44 games. Jeff Baker hit a double play ball his first time. And the curve hangs high. One ball, one strike. So did you think as a player it was a fine line for you as to where you were with your swing and your confidence level during the course of the year? Well, I mean, you go through stretches. Obviously, when you swing the bat well, your confidence level is high. And when you're not, that's what makes it difficult to be an everyday player because you're going to have those spells. You have to handle both. You can't get too high when you swing the bat well. You can't say you're, you're you can't hit when you're struggling a little bit. But I think when you watch Soriano again, he's his his body is blocking himself in, and he can't rotate. And get his hands through, so he's going to end up hitting a lot of balls with top spin. And I bet he's hit a lot of balls, John, that hit hard enough if he got the right rotation would have gone out, but they're not going out because you're getting top spin on. So maybe the ball tonight. Right, exactly. That shot. ball right there, exactly. It had top spin on it. And now he looked like he waited on that ball pretty well, too. And then all of a sudden, he just he, he had to, you know, use his top hand just to get through it. Curveball misses way outside. And Yadier Molina went a long way to get in front of that one. Two balls, two strikes. Well, Cubs fans know that Alfonso Soriano, when he puts it back together, is one of those guys you'll have a week with six home runs. You'll hit two in this game and homers in three straight games, things like that. They, they, uh, they'll come in bunches, and the Cubs need that. But what we're really saying, John, is this shows you how difficult it is to hit. Hitting is a very difficult proposition. I mean, this guy has a, he's at 288. I mean, you know, from hitting in the leadoff spot, he's now moved down because he wasn't hitting well in the leadoff spot. But this guy's been a good hitter. He's hit the ball out of the ballpark. I mean, he's been, you know, a very uh, offensive force. But when you start to struggle, things just look terrible. I mean, look back at what happened to Big Poppy this year. There goes the runner, and uh, that's a walk for Baker. Second walk allowed by Wainwright. Two men on with two men out. I mean, if you go talk to Big Poppy right now, his confidence level is right. high, and he's swinging the bat well, hitting home runs. When we were in there and you talked to him, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. You know, it's, that's why hitting is so difficult to do, and that's why you have to really admire somebody like Albert Pujols, who has been consistent from the day he walked into the big league, on a, in a, to a big league stadium. Here is Coy Hill. He is the, the catcher. He's catching his second game of the day. Curveball, a strike from Wainwright. Well, giving the playing time, Giovanni Soto has that strained oblique on the disabled list. And Coy Hill saying, Listen, I've sat and watched a lot of games, so I'll catch two in a day. Got some off days coming up behind this. Just glad for the playing time. Right now, the backup catcher is Jake Fox. He's an infielder, outfielder, who has also done some catching in the past. But they put Giovanni Soto on the disabled list. And Coy Hill is starting both. And Lou Pinella said after the All-Star break, he might actually catch Jake Fox in one of those games. They go to Washington after the break. And by the way, we will be speaking with Lou Pinella from the Cubs dugout. 60 seconds after this inning. Two men on, two men out. Cubs down by a run. Did he swing? Yeah. And that is the inning. In 60 seconds, Lou Pinella will join us on Sunday Night Baseball. 2-1 to one, Cardinals.
Cubs manager Lou Pinella. Lou, many thanks. Well, it's nice to be here, and what a beautiful night for baseball here in Chicago. Hey, Lou, you were a hitting instructor, and you fired your other hitting instructor. <laughs> no, <laughs> I did. What do you What do you I see know. What do you see from the dugout with Milton Bradley? What can you do to help him? You've been a hitting instructor. Let me tell you this: uh, his swing is starting to come around, Joe. Uh, believe me, he stroked that ball really, really nice to center field. Uh, over the past uh, four or five ball games, he's taken much better swings at the baseball. I, I expect this young man to hit the ball well the second half. I really do. Uh, uh, he's starting to feel good about himself. Uh, he's been watching a lot of film. And uh, let me tell you, uh, it it's coming. Uh, it's been slow, but it's coming. Well, Lou, Randy Wells wasn't part of the original rotation when the season began, but he stepped in nicely. What do you like about this young guy? He comes right at you. He's a confident young man. He can throw three or four pitches over the plate for uh, strikes. And uh, he believes in himself. And, and that's a big part of being successful at the big league level. He was a little keyed up. You know, he's from the St. Louis area when this game started. But he's starting to settle down and throw the ball really, really nice now. Hey, Lou, you're, you're two aces in the bullpen, Marmol and Greg. We're both used in the first game. Are they available here in game two if you need them? Well, we got four days to rest them between now and next <laughs> Thursday. Yeah, they are available. All right, Lou, many thanks. All right, fellas. Well, you notice he said he didn't fire. <laughs> well, the reason I think he said it, you know, he was a hitting instructor. So he's been in the position where the hitting instructor can only advise guys on how to hit, and if they don't perform, it's not necessarily his fault. And I think that's <laughs> that's the point there. This is Adam Wainwright, and he squibs one out of the center field. So Adam Wainwright is two for two against Randy Wells. Here's a look from K Zone brought to you by Cabot Stains. Take a look at Randy Wells and the command of the fastball is a big part of his game, but when he's made mistakes in this game, he's had to pay for it. Skip Schumacher, then Ryan Ludwig hitting that ball out of the ballpark, then Adam Wainwright going up. But when he's hit his spots, he's been effective. That good two seam movement, sinking it away, inside on Ludwig, breaking his bat the next time around, then getting Joe Thurston to roll over on that fastball away. Command critical. He's a guy that throws a lot of first pitch strikes, ranked in the top 10 in percentage of first pitch strikes typically during the course of the season. Brendan Ryan shows bunt. And that ball hit him. The, the, the ball hit the bat and then hit him. It's just so interesting to me that the pitcher singles to lead off the inning, and then you've got a guy bunting the pitcher over uh, in the nine hole, a position player, and that ball hits Brendan Ryan, kind of comes back, hits the bottom of the bat, comes back, see him drop the bat head and the angle of the bat there, comes right back and hits him off the foot. We see guys do that all the time, and it's always a surprise when you very rarely you find out a guy broke a toe, broke a foot. And I, I think a lot of times fans don't pay much attention to guys foul ball off his foot because it happens so often. It looks like it hurts. <laughs> it does. Ryan showing bunt again, and he bunts it foul. Oh, and two. Schumacher, the leadoff man on deck, two left handed hitters. To follow Schumacher and then Rasmus. See Adam Wainwright over at first base. You'll notice the mustache. Well, the, the starting rotation is a sign of unity. They've all grown mustaches. They thought that it it started with uh, some performance. So Chris Carpenter there in the dugout. Nobody's matching Jason Larue and what he's got working there, the backup catcher. But they said, look, it's working, and the wives don't like it much, but players think it's pulling them together. Let's see if they can turn two. Not hit very hard. There's one. Terry all. And the ball was. It's going to be called a double play. Adam Wainwright got the hand up and deflected that ball. And the second base umpire, Dan Bellino, decided that he. Well, that he, he. He signaled out. Well, I think. Well, he's just signaling out at second. Yeah. Ramirez and Terry are arguing with him now, but. He had just signaled the out in second, so I had misread his signal. But he's over to talk to Barksdale, the first base umpire now. Well, I didn't see any interference. What I was, you know, you, he didn't go out of the line to stand in front of the shortstop. Now watch this. He's just coming straight in, and he slides. And you can do that. That's that's not intentional. I mean, you can't call it intentional. I mean, he doesn't know where the throw is going to come from. 
Well, look where he slid. Yeah, Joe. but he could touch the bag. As long as you can touch the bag in your slide, it's legal. But he did elevate his yeah. right hand, by the that way. That doesn't his, matter. His throwing hand, by the way. Yeah, that, right. that got hit on the throw from Ryan Terrio. Yeah. yeah. And right in the dugout saying, uh, Gary Weinberg, take a look. Uh, I got hit with that throw. And he, he did raise his hand to distract the throw. But there's nothing wrong nothing. with that. You, 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 he didn't do anything out of line there. The, the big question is, did he hurt himself? Right. That's a very valuable right hand for Adam Wainwright and for this Cardinals team. He is one of their very best pitchers. Run it going. The throw is right there. Boy Hill guns down Brendan Ryan. It looked like Ryan had a decent jump, not a great jump. And that swipe tag, the umpire says he got him going by because he reached for the outside part of the bag with his left hand. Boy, Hill got a great pitch to throw, a fastball on the outside part of the plate. Able to make the quick transfer and release. It's almost like a, a semi pitch out. Well, when you have a left handed hitter up there and you get the ball to the outside, it makes it a very easy throw. Skip Schumacher has singled and scored a run and he is struck out. This inning disintegrating after the leadoff single by Wainwright. Remember, Brendan Ryan was trying to bunt him over to second and could not get that done and instead hit into a force out. And then he tried to steal his way into scoring position and got thrown out. And the inning is over. Well, what looked like a promising inning went very quickly for the Cardinals. And we'll see how Wainwright is as he heads back to the hill. On scoreboard out in center field. Two to one, the Cardinals lead the Cubs, and Adam Wainwright throws a perfectly placed sinking fastball on the outside corner for a strike one call to Randy Wells, his opposite number. Wells grounded out to short his first time. Last of the fifth, Wainwright and the Cardinals ahead by a run. Fouled, the leadoff man is on deck, and there's that curveball. Strike two call. And John, you were talking in between innings about Wainwright sliding. Remember, 
you don't want to put your right hand down on the ground if you're a right handed pitcher because you, you know you're going to scrape it sliding in. Another curve for the strikeout. So you see a lot of pitchers will go in and they will raise their hand maybe not as high as Wainwright did but you need to keep your pitching hand off of the ground Now watch his right hand. So he's get, making sure so he puts his left hand down there on the ground. That's OK. A lot of guys slide with their right hand down and he's got his hand up. He gets hit but he can't is nothing wrong because you don't know exactly where the throw is coming from. It wasn't intentionally deflecting it but it, it could have been goaltending. No, it was. <laughs> I mean, he could have been called for goaltending right there. Well, I mean, he definitely, could, he's trying to distract the guy. I'm sure, but once, remember, he's a right-handed pitcher. You're not going to tell him to put his hand yeah, on the ground. I, I, if I'm a Cubs fan watching that replay, I'm still not convinced that he could have reached out and touched that bag. Well, he could have touched the bag. I think he would have had to flip around to touch the bag. It's no, watch. You watch when he rolls over. His right hand could touch the bag. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. He has to roll over to do it. Well, it doesn't matter. You, as long as you can touch the bag in your slide. Look at his left hand there. Yeah. His right hand. I mean, you can well, touch the bag. Well, he's never touched it. Well, you don't have to touch it. You have to be able to touch it. I need him to prove to me that he can touch no. it. <laughs> well, I mean, hey, for that matter, Milton Bradley didn't touch the bag either. He right. went over the top of it. So. You don't have to touch the but bag. But you're supposed to be sliding in the direction of the bag, not the infielder. Well, John, that's not the rule. You want to reenact it? Yeah, that's not the rule. You have to be able to touch the bag <laughs> in your slide. You always slide toward the infield. I mean, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to break up the double play. But you can, but you, as long as you can touch the bag you in your reach slide. Out in that, with the infielder on that side, you should be able to reach out with your left hand and touch that bag. Well, he could have. I don't think so. Well, the umpire did. Because <laughs> you don't have to touch it, you just have to be able to touch it. Now, Ryan Terry just tried to bunt for a base hit right there again. Yeah, as you see him going in there, you Look see. Where he goes. He goes in, he could actually reach he over and touch get it the with bag his bag easily. He could have touched it with his left hand Either or his hand. right hand right Either there. Either hand. He wasn't that far away from the bag. So Ryan Terry tried to bunt for a base hit right there with two outs uh, in this situation. Nobody on base. Along the right field line, that one is foul. You know, I, I don't. You know, he's not a prototypical base stealer, as you know, as a two-hole hitter. He's not a guy that's going to steal a base at ease or at will. So I'd rather him swing the bat. So it's the second time tonight that he's bunted. That I really don't like the situation. He bunted in the first inning, down two nothing after leadoff man Sam Fold got on base, and then we saw him try to bunt for a base hit with two outs and nobody on, to where you have to know you're going to steal second base. You get yourself in scoring position. But it's a good idea to get on base with Derek Lee coming up. I, yeah, right but I, I, I think you got to swing for a double. Oh, and to the count. Anyway, I'm glad we, we had that vote about <laughs> whether he could have touched the bag or not. Just because I, I think there's some Cubs fans watching weren't as sure, but we looked at it. I was outvoted. <laughs> guys ganged up on me. <laughs> Colby Rasmus and then Albert Pujols when we come back.
Brought to you by the 2010 Ford Fusion. Get in and drive one. What a uh, spectacular evening in Chicago. Spectacular weekend. Yesterday and today both. My daddy is deployed on the USS Eisenhower. Go Cubs. And, uh, and thoughts and best wishes are with his daddy. Absolutely. And John Colby Rasmus has really developed into a good player. I mean, he's a rookie of the year candidate. You can see right there that he's having a good rookie season. He got a lot of speed. I mean, runs well. I mean, he covers a lot of ground in center field. He's been a real find for the Cardinals. Rasmus, Ludwig, and Keelan Duncan, four outfielders that Tony La Russa, when they're all healthy, wants to rotate. And uh, one would always be out. And, but all four of them would get a lot of time. And all four of them have some pop. And it's a long ball. Rasmus has hit 11. Tonight, though, he has walked twice in front of Albert Pujols. And there's La Russa. But two of those big guys, Duncan and Ankiel, have not yet started to uh, break out with the long ball. Ludwig has just recently gotten it going. And he's got it going big time. That's a base hit to left field. And here comes the great Pujols. Sunday night is a special night of sports action on ESPN. First Sunday night baseball starts at a special time of, of 6 Eastern. That's next Sunday we're talking about. David Wright and the Mets up against Chipper Jones and the Braves. Then at 9 Eastern next Sunday, it'll be the 2009 ESPYs with host Samuel L. Jackson. And he'll be joined by an all-star lineup of top athletes and entertainers to celebrate the best sports stories of the year. Sunday night baseball presented by Taco Bell and the ESPYs. Presented by Under Armour and Land Rover as that ball is fouled by Albert Pujols. And so far, Randy Wells has perhaps done as well against Prince Albert as anybody has done against him all season long. Albert has grounded into a double play and lined out to left center. He's 0 for 2 against him. Well, he's pitched him well because he is he got him out with a change up the first time up and then a fastball in the second time up. One strike to Albert. And let's see if they could turn two on this. Not hit hard. They won't even go to second. And Ramirez throws out Albert Pools. You saw the speed of Colby Rasmus. He runs well. So Albert is 0 for 3, one out. And here is Ryan Burr in the studio with the Sports Center right now. Ludwig has hit a two run homer and has popped up the second. Left field again. On its way. Goodbye. And Ryan Ludwig has done it again. Two two run homers for him. He has knocked in all the Cardinals' runs and they lead four to one. John, I was talking earlier about people learning from watching Albert Pujols hit. Well, I think Ludwig learned a lot over the last couple of years watching him hit because the last time up, he got to the plate. Wells busted him inside with a fastball. So he's sitting on a fastball inside this time. There it is again. And what does he do with it? He makes the adjustment like we talked about Albert Pujols making those adjustments. I mean, it was, he started him out with a fastball inside last time, went away, and then he came back in. And that time he was sitting there waiting for that fastball inside. That's what you call adjusting to how the pitcher got you out last time up. Ryan Ludwig now with 15 home runs, 56 runs batted in. Second time this year he's hit two homers in the same game. But it always is a little more special if you do it against the Cubs. And then you're wearing a Cardinal uniform as Ankiel grounds out. He's now 0 for 3. But Ludwig in the last nine games has 16 RBIs. In the last seven games he's had 15 RBIs. He is on quite the roll. Well he's had some hamstring issues and he's been injured. He hasn't been the same guy he was last year because of health issues. Now he's starting to swing the bat, and that's what I was saying. They're getting him back like the Cubs are talking about getting Ramirez back. They're getting him back, so if you're the Cardinals, you feel like you're still staying a step ahead. And the question is, will it take Ramirez this long to heat up as it took Ludwig to heat up? A lot of people around the Cardinals felt that Ludwig might have come back a little bit too soon from his injury, and 
And maybe he's doing the same thing with the Ramirez, what right? It could be, yeah. Well, the thing Ludwig yeah. coming back, yeah. it was he wasn't ready to see Major League hitting, pitching. For Ramirez coming back, I think there's still something going on with that shoulder. I think it's a little bit different than getting your timing than trying to swing with a sore shoulder. Because when we saw Ramirez kind of wince after that swing, it really makes me think that that there are certain pitches he's going to have some difficulty trying to get the good part of the bat to the ball. Well, I think that's an excellent point. And that is the big question. And before he ever had even his first at bat, it was a question being asked a lot around baseball because of the type of injury that Aramis Ramirez suffered. And the problem, John, that most players have is when are you healthy enough to play? I mean, are you going to try to wait till you're 100% healthy or are you going to try to play? Ramirez recovered that ball and still throws out Molina. But Ryan Ludwig goes deep for the second time. And now it is 4 to 1. The Cardinals leading the Cubs. The big hitters are coming up for the Cubs to try and match what Ludwig has done. Followed by the Taco Bell Legends and Celebrity Softball Game at 10 Eastern on ESPN. Tuesday, the MLB All-Star Red Carpet Show presented by Chevy at 4 o'clock Eastern on the Major League Baseball Network. And then the All-Star Game itself on Fox on Tuesday at 8 Eastern. And the final game in the majors prior to all of the All-Star festivities right here at Wrigley Field. Strike one to Derek Lee. Lee has an RBI single and is lined out to left. He'll be followed by Aramis Ramirez and Alfonso Soriano. The biggest home run threats on the Cubs ball club all coming up here against Adam Wainwright, who now has a 4 to 1 lead. It's 0 2 to Derek Lee. Now, Lee had been fading for a good long while after his wrist injury of 2006. And he's had some decent years since then, but not big time years like we had seen prior to that. But just recently here, in the last, what, three, four weeks or so, he started to look like that Derek Lee again. Well, remember, he had wrist injuries. And the, the toughest thing to do is to hit with, you know, hand injured or your foot. And what happens is it takes a couple of years for him to get the strength back in his wrist. With that curveball into right center, Ludwig one away. Here's a look from K-Zone brought to you by Cabot Stains. Uh, take a look at Adam Wainwright. We talked about that outstanding curveball. 
Well, what he does, he has a get me over curveball. You look at the velocity, 71, 72 miles per hour. He throws it over to get strike one. And then when he wants to put the hitter away, it's the hard curveball. A little bit harder and down in the zone. He wants to bury this in the dirt. Yeah, Yadier Molina brock it. You see the velocity, 74, 75, 76 miles per hour. So he adds some velocity to that curveball and pulls it through to get it to the bottom of the zone to try to get the swing and the miss. Aramis Ramirez. He's grounded into a double play, grounded out to first. And the Ramis was just taking all the way on that one. One ball, one strike. That was odd to see Ramis not even thinking like he was going to hit. One ball, one strike to count. Line drive base hit. The Lowe's home team advantage. And the Cubs, although their offense is down big time from last year, it's still been better at home. Four and a half runs a game here, and only 3.7 runs per game on the road, which is next to last in the National League. They have not been road warriors. They're hitting 260 at home, 235 when traveling. And this is the end of a long homestand, their longest homestand of the year. This is the 11th game in a row for them at home. Alfonso Soriano is flying out to left and lined out to left. Waiting for him to find that power again. The ball on the strike. Getting a slide on the outside. One thing they've really done is they've cut down on Alfonso Soriano's leg kick in his swing. He used to have that big leg kick almost to where the front knee would go back beyond his plant leg, the back leg in his approach. Now he just kind of takes it back a little bit for timing. They wanted him to try to get to be able to get that front foot down earlier to get to the fastball. Did he swing? Yes. That's Barksdale. At first base on the appeal said that was a swing. I tell you, we've had an inordinate number of check swings, it feels like, in this game. You see the leg kick and the check swing, and Lance Barksdale, I think, got that one right. But that's that's Wainwright with the breaking pitch changing speeds getting the hitters off balance speeding them up to the fastball and then slowing them down with the breaking ball Ramirez the runner at first who holds on the bag with him another breaking ball this will stay in the infield and Aramis really did not run he got not quite halfway to first base or rather uh, Soriano I beg your pardon Ramirez was at first but uh, Soriano went about halfway to first and just stopped well, it looks like it's a backup breaking ball. It looked like it was going to break, but watch, he, he swings at it belatedly. I mean, watch, he wasn't going to swing, and all of a sudden, see, it's backing up. It's not breaking sharply away from him, and he's late on it. Well, he keeps his head still anyway. Soriano is retired. He's 0 for 3. The batter, Milton Bradley, who has walked and hit a line drive single to right. Four to one. The Cardinals lead the Cubs. Last of the six. Ramirez at first. Two down. That ball into the gap. And it's going to go through. To third is Ramirez heading home. Ryan throws home. Offline. An RBI double for Milton Bradley. Four to two Cardinals. Well, Lou Pinella said he was starting to swing the bat well, and when I watched him in the first game today, he walked three times, he wasn't aggressive, but the one time that he did swing the bat, he hit it hard to Albert Pujols at first base. And there's a fastball away, and he just finds the gap in the right center field. That looked like he was free and smooth through the hitting zone. And he's talking to someone, he's saying, yes, you were right. So Milton Bradley, maybe that's Bon Joshua he was talking to, the hitting instructor, or pointing at. Ninth double of the year for Bradley, and here's Jeff Baker to try and bring it home, but he swings at that breaking ball, doesn't get it. Well, I kept talking about Milton Bradley as the bottom half and top half were working against each other, but you see that swing right there. It was all linked together as the front foot hit the ground, the hip came through, and it led the hand through the zone. So it looks like his swing is getting back on track. And the curveball snaps in there for a call strike two. There is uh, Angel Guzman warming up in the Cubs bullpen now. You got Baker, the seventh place hitter, Coy Hill on deck, and then the pitcher's spot. 
So they'll be ready to pinch it if these hitters can keep the inning going on. Two men down, runner at second. Fastball, got him looking. The Cubs get one of those runs back. We head to the late innings, four to two. Cardinals on to the seventh. Four to two. Joe Thurston facing Wells. Pops one up. Ramirez over in front of Terrio. And Thurston is now 0 for 3. John, let's take a look at the pitches to Ryan Ludwig tonight. The first home run he hit was on a fastball out over the plate. And up. Now watch. So what do you do? You go inside the next time to try to get him out, and they were able to get him on a pop-up on the inside. Now he makes the adjustment in the sixth inning. Fastball in, look at that same location, and what does he do? He hits a two-run homer. That's what you call adjusting to how they pitch you. And that once they let you hit a ball out over the plate, they're always going to go inside. And we saw Albert Pujols, that's what I was talking about. You learn from watching Albert Pujols make adjustments. And as a, you watch great hitters, when you're on that team, you learn a lot about how to make those adjustments. Adam Wainwright pops one up. Foul ground. And here is Derek Lee to take charge. The first time Wainwright has been retired. He hit two singles earlier. But Joe, let me ask you about that adjustment. When you go back into the dugout, is it something that you talk to somebody about? Or is there just that voice in your head that you tell yourself, next time up, this is what I'm going to look for? Well, after he got jammed, he should know that they're going to try to do that again. So he's going to pitch inside. All you do, you have to do is keep from opening up too quick. You just use your hands, which is something Albert Pujols always talks about. Using your hands, and that's what Ludwig did. He didn't use his body, he used his hands to get the barrel of the bat out front. Here's Brendan Ryan. So he goes up there in that spot looking for a fastball he, in. He, he's not going to swing unless he gets that ball right. in. Exactly. Fastball in, first pitch. Brendan Ryan with a single to right, his first hit of the night. Well, let, let me ask this if you don't get that pitch, do you take it? Yeah, you take it. You have to take it. I mean, you're not in position to hit it. It's like if you go up looking for a breaking ball and they throw you a fastball, you got to take it. You can't swing at it. Or if you go up looking for a fastball in, they throw you a fastball away or a breaking ball away, you should take it. No, I mean, that, that's the adjustment, but that's the discipline you have to have. A lot of times you look for a fastball and they throw it, you swing at it. A lot of times you look for a curveball and they throw it, you swing at it no matter where it is. Shouldn't they know 
that no. he knows. No, no. And therefore, <laughs> <laughs> no. But that is no. I mean, that's it. He knows that I know that he can't hit this pitch inside. So is he looking for that pitch inside? That's the thing. It's that old saying: you throw a pitch to a guy. If he doesn't hit it, he has to prove to you he can hit it. Now that they, he has proven that he can handle that inside fastball, I think you'll see him go away with a slider if he's still in there when Ludwig comes up again. He's hit two fastballs for home runs. But that's the adjustment, you know, that you make as a pitcher, too. You have to make adjustments as a pitcher as well. Now, in the first at bat of the day where you don't have something to adjust to, do you just look for a pitch out over the plate to drive? Well, they have something to look for because they've seen him pitch before. You, go, you can go in and watch how he pitched you last time, or you can watch how he pitches to other right-handed hitters, and just see where he, you know what he tries to do to them. And so you're already automatically you're going up there with an idea. You're going up there with a game plan. You know, we talked to Albert Pujols last time here. He said he goes with a game plan all the time, but if that plan doesn't work, he has to change. This is right to the second baseman. Baker throws him out. That's all for Schumacher. Rasmus stranded on deck. Seven pitch inning for Wells and probably his final inning. In the 2009 State Farm Home Run Derby. It's a live telecast from Bush Stadium. The pool holds to be joined by Adrian Gonzalez, Prince Fielder, and Ryan Howard. Sluggers all from the National League. Carlos Pena, the American League's leading slugger. Nelson Cruz, Brandon Inge, and Joe Mauer from the American League. And there's a big swing and a foul back to the screen by Kosuke Fukudome. Pinch hitting for Coy Hill against Adam Wainwright. Fukudome, a guy who gets on base a lot. Fukudome hitting only 252, but a 368 on base average. Out on deck is Jake Fox, a powerful hitter. So, Lupinet, I'm sure, just watched Fukudome to get on that Fox hit a homer and tie the game. As easy as that. What was that? Bob Prince, the great announcer for uh, Pittsburgh, used to say a bloop and a blast. Yeah. Let's just get somebody on and then go big fly. The gunner. Well, this is a ground ball. So, he did not get the bloop. Nor the walk, and now Fox will come up with nobody on base. See Adam Wainwright uh, now into the seventh inning. This is 17 straight starts, six or more innings pitch. That is a workhorse. That's what you want out of a front end of the rotation starting pitcher. The good thing for the Cardinals, they have two. Chris Carpenter is that guy when he's healthy, and Adam Wainwright has grown in to be that guy as well. That's one of the reasons that I think the Cardinals can hold on. I mean. Their offense is starting to gear up now that Ludwig is back. They've got some front end rotation guys 
They've got some relief pitchers. They, I mean, they have, they can mix and match. At least Larusa does a great job of that anyway. And they can mix and match, and I think they have enough to stay. And if you're looking at the Cubs, I mean, the Cubs have the starting pitching. Jake Fox over Wainwright and handled by Schumacher. So Fox is retired. Two down. I mean, they have Zambrano. I mean, they have Lilly. They have Dempster when he gets healthy. I mean, they have the starting pitching as well. So I think it's going to be a great race down the stretch. I think a lot of times, I think the, the, a lot of the Cubs fans kind of panic too soon I think at the beginning of this year when they started to struggle and we're not scoring runs I think this is going to be a good race between you know down the stretch especially between the Cardinals and the Cubs and the Astros are starting to come and right. the Reds are still Brewers around the Brewers I mean it's I think it's going to be a good race and the Astros seem to be able to gear it up the second half better than anyone else and we'll see if that continues. Sam Fold is two for three. Two down, nobody on here in the seventh as Wainwright continues to roll. Now, Yadier Molina is going to go out and chat with, with Wainwright. Bad luck for the Cincinnati Reds when Jay Bruce, their young star, uh, suffered a broken wrist at City Field in New York last night going for a fly ball. And they already struggled to score runs. And, yeah, and Joey that's Votto right. had been out as well, too. So, I mean, that's, they've had some bad luck, Dusty and his crew. Sam Fold trying to get on base with Terrio on deck. Two down in the inning. The fastball is just off the outside. It's a 3 0 count now to Fold. There's Terrio. Terrio has been one of the Cubs hitters who has done what you would have expected him to do this year. One of very few. So it's a walk for Fold and now Terrio to try and keep the inning going. I think one of the other things I mentioned earlier is there's been speculation of Roy Halliday, who's been made available from the Toronto Blue Jays, that the Cardinals would have interest in him. Can you imagine a three three deep rotation of Carpenter, Wainwright, and Halliday? Or are we going to give up for Halliday though? I think when you have a guy like Halliday, I mean, it's it's easy to say trade him and get a lot of pieces, get a lot of parts. But even if you get pitching, how long does it take the pitcher that you get to become a Halliday or a Santana? That's that's why I always have a problem when you trade an ace that is really truly an ace. One pitch and out for Terrio. Derek Lee left on deck. We head to the eighth. The big hitters: Rasmus, Pujols, Ludwig. Coming up.
who believes that life is better lived together. Volvo for life. John Miller, Hall of Famer Joe Morgan, Steve Phillips with you from Wrigley Field, Chicago. Here we go to the eighth inning. The Cardinals lead the Cubs four to two. Two two run homers by Ryan Ludwig. The story and the strong right arm of Adam Wainwright keeping the Cubs down. And here is Angel Guzman. And Colby Rasmus first ball hitting and he is thrown out by Baker. One away and here comes Albert Pujols now. See Guzman just back off the disabled list and the opponent's batting average 203. 11 walks in those 33 innings so he's been a very effective pitcher when healthy coming out of Lou Pinella's bullpen. And Jake Fox is the new catcher after he pinch hit for Wells. He's the backup catcher. Fukudome had pinch hit for Coy Hill. And I say he's the backup catcher right now with Giovanni Soto on the disabled list. So here is the great pool holes who was grounded into a double play, lined out to left center, and grounded out to third. He's 0 for 3. But now facing Guzman for the first time in this game. And just imagine you're Fox and you're this is your first time catching in the big leagues and you got to figure out how to get Albert Pujols. Yeah. So uh, this is a tough chore. It's not about just putting fingers down. You have to try to work with the pitcher's strength. That's a strike. I think, I think the other thing is I'm not sure what's tougher is trying to call the right pitches with Pujols up or if Carlos, Carlos Marmo comes into the game trying to catch Marmo. He's, Fox has got to be thinking to himself, let's win this without Marmo having to pitch. Broken bat. Terrio and Albert is 0 for 4. And Ryan Ludwig is the different big difference in this ball game. Two two run homers in the first inning a fastball up and out over the plate and he hit it in the left center field. And then again in the sixth inning fastball in and he pulls it to left field. So good job of hitting by Ludwig looks more like the Ryan Ludwig of last year who was just phenomenal. And he was going to the All-Star game last year at this time. 37 homers, 113 batted in last year. He's faced Guzman one time, and he homered against him. Rips this one into the gap. Extra bases. Bradley plays it off the Ivy. It's a double for Ludwig to go with those two homers. And that's interesting. I mean, he's been able to get fastballs to hit this entire ball game. And normally, if a guy hits a home run off a fastball in the first inning, you try something different. But he's been able to get fastballs. His three at bats, his three hits have come on fastballs. And that's a fastball, and he goes the other way with it. They have not tried to change speeds on him so far tonight. And again, you know, Fox just coming into the game, Guzman just coming in. You know, they want, maybe wanted to just try to get ahead of him. He did change location. Fox went yeah. away with that first yeah. pitch fastball. The other ones had been inside, but I think something softer might make sense. Nine RBIs, nine hits, and 14 at bats for the weekend. Here at Wrigley for Ludwig. And that's just off the inside. And these are big games. They're always big between the two clubs, the two rivals, but at the same time, big pennant race games. Rick Ankiel, who has flied out to Shadow Center and twice grounded out. The base hit came in a run with Ludwig at second. Ludwig is an interesting story because he was a journeyman. He'd been playing for years primarily in the minor league. He had brief look sees in the big leagues but it never had stayed and always just used for a little bit here a little bit there and platooned and a role player and whatnot but last year he wasn't penciled in to be an everyday player with the Cardinals but finally he was so good so productive that he forced his way into the lineup every day it was a, a key component of their plans going into this season. Uh, it's a great story of perseverance. It got to the point where he thought his career was over. He had a fractured hip. They put a metal rod in his hip and I think he thought these day, days where he'd have nights like this would never come. And I think he thought his physically he wasn't going to be able to play again with the injuries that he had sustained. Worked his way back. Ludwig is a story that does not get told often. It doesn't often have, have that kind of a happy ending. And after all those years of, of persevering and as you say uh, coming back from terrible injury problems that is scooped up by Baker and the inning is over Ludwig is stranded big hitters coming up with the Cubs are down by two Lee Ramirez and Soriano.
with Hall of Famer Joe Morgan, Steve Phillips. I'm John Miller. Every Sunday you'll find us here. Our 20th season of covering Major League Baseball on Sunday Night Baseball. And the first pitch curveball from Adam Wainwright for a strike to Derek Lee. Lee is knocked in a run with a single, lined out to left, and flied out to right center. And a foul out of play off to the right and quickly 0 2. After Lee, the cleanup man, Aramis Ramirez. Then Alfonso Soriano. Milton Bradley, they get somebody on. Trevor Miller, a left hander, will be ready in the Cardinals' bullpen if needed. 0 2 the count to Derek Lee, leading the league in homers and RBI so far this month. Out in left field, Brendan Ryan. He slings it over to first. He got him. Uh, you don't rarely see anybody play Derek Lee that deep into the outfield because he does run well. But the ball was hit so sharply, Ryan had a chance of to catch it, get up, and throw it over the first base in time to get him. You see, he flips it over there. Well, you don't see throws like that no. from, from, <laughs> from left field stops. very often. Yeah. Uh, he has a very strong arm. You know, he was playing the depth that a lot of times you'll see, like with a big left hand, a pull hit to the second baseman will play back on the outfield grass a little bit. You have to have arm strength to play that deep. He's, short stop. he's still out there now for Aramis Ramirez. Which is very deep. And it, well, the ball is hit sharp to another breaking ball. Lee is the only one that's hit the breaking ball hard tonight. And you see how quickly he flips it over there. there. There's two things with playing deep, though. If you play that deep, anything up the middle you're never going to get. And you, your range is limited because the angle you have to take to get to the ball. So sometimes when you play that deep, it's not really advantageous, you know, to making a play. Two strikes to count to Aramis Ramirez, and he's back out there again, six or seven feet onto the outfield grass. Ramirez is one for three, singled and scored his last time. Just off the outside, he tantalized him with that one. One ball, two strikes. Well, you watch Adam Wainwright, Wainwright and you, you really see the, the slider on the outside part of the plate. He started to use that more as the game's gone along. That outstanding curveball, and they get a lot of ground. He gets a lot of ground balls because hitters hit the top of the breaking pitch. Well, he, he actually missed the top of that breaking pitch and is tagged out by Yadier Molina. Two down. Well, we're definitely not seeing a healthy, in shape Aramis Ramirez. I mean, he's going to work his way back and get his timing right, but right now you can see that that's not the Aramis Ramirez we're used to seeing because right there, I mean, he's a good breaking ball hitter. He can handle the breaking ball in the strike zone, but he chased that one. Alfonso Soriano and he chased that one. He tried to to restrain himself, but it was too late. Ramirez, or rather uh, Soriano, 0 for 3, has flied out to left, lined out to left, and popped out to second. 114 at bat since his last home run. Little slide piece on the outside, strike two. I like that, John. A little slide piece. That's good, John. Yeah. Wow. Good lingo. I uh yeah. I was talking to Gary Matthews recently. <laughs> Well, you've been chilling with Gary Matthews. I think my, <laughs> my fellow broadcaster with the Phillies. <laughs> oh, uh, oh boy! Well, that's executing a pitch right there. He threw it right where, where Yadier Molina wanted him to throw it right down at the bottom of that strike zone. And Kazon said he did get the bottom of the strike zone at the knees. One and two. Oh. But that was definitely not a strike, but he swung at it. That's had a hard curveball, and the fans are booing Soriano. Strong night for Wainwright again. Yadier Molina coming up.
catch all the action live from St. Louis on Tuesday, July 14th at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. This one counts. 43 years ago it was the last time the All-Star game was held in St. Louis. It was hot in what was then a brand new Bush Stadium. What we would now call the old Bush Stadium, which was then brand new. The ball was accidentally hit by Yadier Molina and then hit sort of in self-defense by the man on deck, Joe Thurston. Stick save and a beauty by Joe Thurston. <laughs> kind of reminded me of Joe Thornton, you know, the <laughs> hockey player with the San Jose Sharks. You should never go on that one. <laughs> good stick work there by Joe Thurston. <laughs> now to your Molina with a one strike count. He'll be at the All Star game. He's a first time All Star. Voted in by the fans. The first time any of the catching Molinas will ever have played in an All Star game. Tonight he is 0 for 2 with a walk. Right up the middle, and he's got his first hit. This one against Angel Guzman. But in 66, it was so hot. There were players who were going down with heat prostration. Maury Wills got an RBI single in the tent to win the game. Brooks Robinson of the American League was the MVP. He was 3 for 4. The National League starting outfield, Aaron, Mays, and Clemente, all three of whom played the entire game. It was a 10 inning game. There were, in fact, eight players who went the distance. The National League won the game, and only four pitchers pitched. Sandy Koufax was the starting pitcher. That year, he would go on to win 27 games and then retire at age 30. At the peak of his powers, Koufax had pitched on Sunday a complete game in San Francisco. Joey, he told us the story himself. Right. And he said Austin would often pitch him on the Sunday. So then he wouldn't pitch the All-Star game since he just pitched a complete game. And then he would pitch the first game after the break. So he'd pitch two straight Dodger games. Thurston's butt back to the mound. Guzman's going to go for the lead runner. He, it's, it's dropped in it. It is just a drop. No out. No out at second base. Terrio could not hold it. Everybody's safe. So I've, I've always been asked, you know, what rule would you change if you could, you know, in this game? And it would be that that you're taking the ball out of the glove. I think you have to always catch the ball and get it out and throw the ball. And he tries to catch it and Truey was not taking it out of the glove. So he's called safe at second base. But a lot of times we see guys reach in and the, and the ball comes out. I think you should have to hold on to the ball. And Chris we'll Duncan. Chris Duncan has come up as a pinch hitter for Adam Wainwright. A left handed hitter and Lou Pinella is bringing in the left hander. Sean Marshall with two men on and nobody out.
on the team of the great Albert Pujols. It is Ryan Ludwig who has made the headlines tonight at Wrigley Field as the Cubs are trailing the Cardinals four to two, and the Cubs Ryan or the Cardinals Ryan Ludwig two two run homers for so far all of the runs. Sean Marshall, the big left-hander, throws a curveball in there for a called strike to Nick Stavanoa, who is the pinch hitter for the pinch hitter. Duncan had come out to bat for Wainwright. Marshall came in to pitch, and so Stavanoa has gone in to face Marshall, a right-handed hitter rather than the lefty Duncan. Well, Marshall has done very well out of the bullpen, John. He wasn't doing very well as a starter, but he has pitched very well since they put him in the bullpen. He's a real weapon for Lou Pinella because he can really neutralize the left-handed hitter, holding him to a batting average below 200. But he can also get the right-handers out with his breaking ball or changeup, and he can go beyond just the one hitter. And the slider on the inside almost hit him. 2 0 the count. Now on deck is another right handed hitter, Brendan Ryan. And in the left field bullpen, the Cubs ace setup man, Carlos Marmol, has started to warm up. There's Ryan. Marmol has been joined out there by Alan Heilman. That is shot foul right off the screen in front of the Cubs dugout. Two and one. The other thing to remember, Jake Fox is catching right now. He's the backup catcher out of necessity because they pinch hit for Coy Hill. He only has caught two games at Triple A this year. He's really kind of played some first base, third base, DH outfield. He came up as a catcher, but has been moving around, so has not been really a day-to-day -day catcher behind the plate. But he actually looks very good to me. I've been watching him closely. I mean, he seems to be catching the ball, framing it well. He's doing everything that a good major league catcher should do, even though he doesn't have that experience. Because, like I said, I was watching him closely. When it's not just about putting the number, the fingers down. It's about holding the target and receiving the ball well. Stab it all. Rips one foul into the Cubs bullpen. I still say Carlos Marmol warming up in the bullpen is a challenge for any catcher, even at a regular catcher with his electric fastball, but he can scatter his pitches. He bounces a lot of sliders in the dirt. And that could be a challenge facing Jake Fox here to come. Three and two the count with Molina at second, Thurston at first. And he walked him. The bases are loaded. The Cardinals bullpen is also busy. Remember, they've now pinch hit for Wainwright, the starter who gave them eight strong. Although looking to the Cardinal bullpen now, Franklin had been throwing and now he has taken a seat with the jacket over the right arm. It's easy to recognize Franklin when you look out there. You don't really need his number. Well, the starting pitchers have grown the mustaches. Franklin has the beard. You know, John, I thought that was a very interesting pitch. He threw him a 3 2 breaking ball and he misses now. The bases are loaded. A good sinker could have gotten the ground ball that he needed. Well, here comes Luke Pinella. Yeah. And uh, obviously he's going to make a double switch, looks like. His uh, pitcher will be due up third in the last half of the ninth inning. So he's explaining all of this, the, the moves he's going to make here with Marvin Hudson, the plate umpire. I just need to explain to the bullpen who's coming in. Well, Lou's looking at the lineup card now that, that Marvin Hudson is carrying. <laughs> you don't see that very often. But what he's going to well, do? Marshall's going to go left field to right. the outfield. Right. One, yeah, that's interesting. You got two lefty. Remember, Marshall is the only left-hander he's got in the bullpen, and Marshall's going to stay in. Alfonso Soriano is going to uh, depart. And Aaron Heilman's going to come in to face this right-handed hitter. And then Marshall will come back in, apparently.
games per week live on your computer. For more details, visit MLB.tv where baseball is always on. And we've had the, the crowd is a buzz here. Soriano has been removed. Aaron Heilman has come into pitch and the man he's replacing is likely only replacing for one hitter. Sean Marshall, the other pitcher, the only left hander in the Cubs bullpen, has gone out to play left field with the right handed hitting Ryan at the plate. Then two lefties scheduled to follow Schumacher and Rasmus. And John, you don't see this often now, but in the past you'd see it because they didn't have so much specialization and they didn't want to use up, you know, two two hit pitchers just to face two hitters. But as you mentioned, Marshall being the only left hander in the bullpen, they don't want to take him out of the ball game. But he also didn't want him to pitch to Ryan. And there's ball one. It's four to two. The Cardinals are leading. They had the bases loaded with nobody out, and the Cubs infield was playing in on that pitch. Now the middle infielders have moved back halfway. Canella didn't want to take him out of it. Marshall on game. He didn't want to pitch to Ryan, but he also doesn't want to fly ball hit the left right here either. the screen one ball and one strike now how long would Lou keep this going you've got Schumacher the second baseman due up next but he's got Jarrett Hoffpower a right handed hitter that he could use as a pinch hitter for Schumacher well I'm sure that Tony La Russa is also thinking over there about how to make this work to his advantage it's too good for Tony not to try to do do something. One and one the count. And off the fist foul back to the screen. One and two the count. There's some part of Tony that's taking this as a challenge, isn't it? Tony, you know, Tony Lewis is one of the more innovative managers in the game. And this is two of the most experienced and successful major league managers ever matching wits here late in the game. Well, I know Tony already knows what he wants to do. Yeah. I mean he is I mean he had he was ready the moment that Luke Sent Marshall out to left field. And the slider is down the way. So you get two pitchers in the lineup right now. Heilman will be listed in Soriano's spot, the number five spot, which was the last spot to bat in the eighth inning. But Marshall is still in the lineup, hitting eighth and is due up third in the last half of the ninth inning. Carlos Marmol, a right hander, is ready in the bullpen. So even if LaRusso went to a different hitter. He could counter that. Whoa, slider just off the outside. And you see how, again, a good job by Fox. He's framing these things pretty well. I mean, this he looks watch, watch him catch the ball. See, I mean, he's framing that that's a that's a technique that you normally don't learn unless you catch a lot. Good job. He, he, a lot of guys will have their glove moving away from the target. He caught it right there and held it there. Three and two. He struck him out. And he needed the strikeout. With the bases loaded and one out. And now you've got the left handed hitter, Schumacher, coming up. And Pinella's worked this now. He can bring Marshall back in. And even if Tony pinch hits for this left handed hitter, he could bring in Marmol, the right hander from the bullpen. Reed Johnson is going to go into left field. With Marshall coming back in from left field to do the pitching. And the fans are shouting, Lou. <laughs> See, this, this, being honest with you, this is also a rule that could bear changing as well, simply because the rule says, you know, if you come in as a pitcher, you have to pitch to one batter. You see? So is he now coming in as a left fielder or is he coming in as a pitcher? See, I think that's what LaRusse is trying to find out here. Because if you're if you have to come if you come in as a pitcher, you have to pitch to one guy, right? So now LaRusse is trying to find out what the rule is and make sure that he's coming back in as a pitcher, but I don't think that's the way the rule should read. If you make a guy a left fielder, then he's a left fielder. You bring in a new pitcher. That pitcher has to pitch to one hitter, and that's the way it should be. Because this particular yeah, pitcher yeah. has already faced a hitter anyway. Yeah, but but he wasn't a pitcher. He was a left fielder. Well, what if Tony wants to pinch hit for his guy now? Well, that's what I mean. That's what they're trying to figure does, out. Does here. Marshall have to stay in to face exactly. him? Exactly. Right. Well, that's, that's why he's question. asking. The, that's why he went to the home plate umpire, and he went and asked the crew chief, and I and we'll just, we'll see what's happening here, because you know I'm I don't know the rule. Be honest with you. Well, not Tony points into the dugout. He's going to make a move here. Yeah. So that it looks like he's going to have to stay in and face a batter. Right. 
But Tony wanted to make sure you you yeah. called it Joe. He wanted to make sure that Marshall would have to stay yeah. in. Yeah, because I mean, once you become a left fielder, you're a left fielder. You're no longer a pitcher. Well, not according to this crew. Yeah. Well, I think that's the rule. I mean, if you become a left fielder, you're a left fielder. You're not a pitcher. You can't be listed in both places. Jared Hoffpower is the man who's come out on deck to pinch it for Schumacher and Padema <laughs> laughing. He well, knew that Tony was going to do something. Well, that's why I was telling you, Tony already had in his mind what he was going to do. This was not a shock to Tony. He knew what was happening. But obviously, Joe, they're not looking at it as they just brought the left fielder in to pinch. No, he's a he's a, well, he, he's a pitcher. You become a pitcher once you go to the mound. How about Albert Pujols pulling Hoffpower back to the dugout to give him some tip before he went back up to the plate? But the point being, Marshall has to face a hitter. Right. Lou cannot counter this move. No. Exactly. So this is Jarrett Hoffpower, just recently called up in the minor leagues. He's no relation, oddly enough, to the Cubs' Micah Hoffpower. Two Hoffpowers in the park tonight, not related. The middle infield double play depth. And a foul out of play off the right field line. Bases loaded with one out. The Cardinals with a chance to break it open here. The Cubs are fighting to stay alive in this game. Four to two Cardinals. Jared Hoffpower, since his call up for the Miners, three hits, 11 at bats, including two doubles and two runs batted in. Cardinals have had a lot of young kids getting at bats in critical situations this year. They've gone with their young prospects instead of kind of the journeyman six-year minor league free agent players. Learning experiences for the young guys. And the curveball. That is, that no swings says Lance Barksdale. The ball and a strike now. H-O-F-F-P-A-U-I-R. Hoffpower. And both of the Hoffpowers spell their name Which way. is interesting, yeah. Used to be an owner of the Baltimore Orioles named Hoff Berger. But these are the first Hoff powers in Major League history. And that curve is tapped foul. One and two. You've got a left handed hitter on deck, Colby Rasmus. The Cardinals only have one more non pitcher still available, and that's the backup catcher, Jason LaRue, a right handed hitter. The base runners, Molina at third, Thurston at second. And Stabanoa at first. Middle infield double play down. He struck him out. Well, so far, Lou has gotten exactly what he wanted. He got the strike out of Brendan Ryan, and now he gets to strike out of Schumacher. No, Hop Power. Hop Power, I'm sorry. Yeah, Hop and Power. If, and if they get out of this jam, as you see him chase this ball out of the zone, he also gets momentum and the crowd. Behind his team as they come in and try to make up this deficit. Ryan Franklin is up again in the Cardinal bullpen, getting ready for the last of the ninth. Colby Rasmus. Curveball a strike. I think it would have been interesting if Brian Brendan Ryan would have hit a fly ball to left field, though. <laughs> that would have been interesting. I think that would be interesting just to see if he has practiced out there in left field. But you know, pitchers do shag before the game sometimes. They're out there in the outfield. At least the throw to the plate that would have been interesting. Colby Rasmus hitting 186 against lefties. Left field. Johnson on the move. He falls. He got it. He made the catch. And the inning is over. Lee Johnson is the star of Sunday Night Baseball defensively. The Rod Prince fielder of a grand slam back in April on Sunday night. And he just took one away from Colby Rasmus that might have driven a stake through the hearts of the Cubs tonight. Well, that ball was slicing away from him, John. Look at that. Just as a great play, but Ooh. did he make it? Ooh. He stumbled also <laughs> on his way to making that dive. Like a trap. Wow. Somehow, the Cubs are still breathing. Franklin coming in.
Leading by two, Reed Johnson, although he appeared to stumble, kept the deficit at just the two runs with the bases loaded. And look at that, he almost fell over. And John, this is the reason I'm not a fan of replay, because we only replay the home runs and there are other game-changing plays that happen throughout the game. And that was one of them. I don't think he made that catch. It appeared to me that it was short hop. But you mean replay for the umpire? Yeah, for the umpire. To have a look at, yeah. yeah. That the umpire should have been able to go look at that. But Here is Ryan Franklin. He's done a great job as the closer. And it gets Milton Bradley chasing that high fastball. And it is 0-2. Well, I think it would be too tough to go look at things in the game right now like that. That's why I say I'm not a fan because a home run is not always the game-changing play. And there are a lot of other plays that happen that we could review that would be as more important in the game. But yeah, you the, can't do that in a situation like this. The replay for the umpires to view is for what they, the so-called boundary call. Oh, yeah. Home run, fair or foul home run. Did the fan interfere on a home run or a would-be home run? But again, why is that more important than the play we just saw? Yeah. Bradley is two for two with a walk in this game. And that one is just... Very close to his right elbow. Bradley has walked singled and hit an RBI double. Franklin with a .82 ERA, the best earned run average of any reliever. He has 20 saves already this year in 21 save opportunities. He has been superb. And Bradley fouls one off the left field line. Jared Hawkpower stays in to play second base after pinch hitting for Schumacher. For the Cubs, you've got Bradley, Jeff Baker, do up second, and then the pitcher spot do up third. They've got Fontenot, a lefty, Micah Hoffpower, a lefty, still on their bench, do the Cubs. They need a base runner. With one base runner, they could send the possible tying run of the game to the plate. There's Baker on deck. Ryan Franklin, the closer, and has been what a difference from last year. The Cardinals blew 31 saves last season, most in the National League, but Franklin has been a stabilizer in that pen. That one came up and he hit Bradley. Foul ball. Two and two. 41,244. The pay crowd at Wrigley Field tonight. And for the day night doubleheader, 81,945 uh, paid admissions. Perfect weather for a day night doubleheader. Cardinals and Cubs. What a, there's no better way to spend a Sunday afternoon in Chicago. A dream day for a baseball fan in this. Beautiful historic yard. Two and two to Bradley. Straight three call. Bradley thought it was off the outside, and he is very discerning at the plate. Very well, disciplined. Well, he's been getting a lot of pitches toward the outside corner called a strike. I mean, that's a very close pitch there. So, I mean, with two strikes, it's very difficult to take that pitch. And we have seen Marvin Hudson expand the zone on that side to left-handed hitters today. Here's Jeff Baker, 0 for 2 with a walk. And he takes a called strike from Franklin. Michael Hoffpower has come out on deck for the Cubs. So if Baker gets aboard, Hoffpower would come up as the possible tying run. 0 and 2 to come. Hoffpower hit a three-run homer. In the first inning of game one, and he's got a lot of power. But right now, the odds of Baker getting on base are very low with an 0 2 count against Franklin. So it's another one of those sliders in the dirt. This time he took it. 1 and 2. Ryan Franklin, an all star, a guy who had been a starter in his career with the Philadelphia Phillies, Charlie Manuel, who is managing the National League in the all star game, converted Franklin to the bullpen. And he fought it, he resisted it, he didn't want to do it. But now the first guy he's going to go look up at the All-Star game is Charlie Manuel and tell him thank you. <laughs> One and two the count. Ooh, got it on his hands. That ball got in the stands just like that. One and two strikes to Jeff Baker. On the inside corner, another called third strike. 
And if we watch Kazon, it's going to be a very similar pitch to what Milton Bradley saw. Let's take a look at Kazon, and I think you'll see it's a very similar pitch. See that? Just a little yeah. off the plate, just a little off of what Kazon says, but I could tell it was the exact same pitch, just a little off, but with two strikes. Well, they always say swinging anything close with two strikes. You don't want to get called out. I don't think they say that anymore, but that's what they used to say. Yeah, <laughs> they did. Well, here yeah. is Michael Hoffpower. He launched a three run homer against the Cardinals Kyle Loesch in the first inning of game one. He was playing first base as Derek Lee did not play in game one. Eight home runs 25 batted in. Micah Hoffpower. Jared Hoffpower playing second base for the Cardinals. No relation. One ball and one strike. So I probably just been mistaken all these years thinking half powers very uncommon. <laughs> Never enough half powers in a game in my view. It's a great name. I love it. Half power. Inside. Three and one the count. They need a base runner. They get a base runner. This whole game could be turned around in one swing of the bat. And Jake Fox who has a lot of power is. On deck two balls and one strike is the count. Here's Fox hoping to get up in the ninth inning. The shortstop again is out of the outfield. Brendan Ryan and Hawkbauer, the second baseman, is on the outfield grass too. Strike two on the outside. Well, he just painting those edges of the plate, didn't he? Right around the corners of the plate. And they say guys get the benefit of calls a little more often when they're always right around the plate. That one called the ball. Way outside. <laughs> well, it's going to be a little farther outside than the one that he called on Bradley. See, that's a little farther outside. You can't go that far off. You don't blame him for throwing it there, though. Huh? Three and two. Strike three call. And hot power, furious with Marvin Hudson giving him an earful as they leave the field. But the Cubs have all been struck out here in the ninth inning looking. Well, a great job by Franklin. He gets three strikeouts to end the, the ball game. 